You can always tell when spring is nearly here when the frogs start spawning. Today I'm going down to my local pond to hunt for some frog spawn, and this begins our journey as we follow along with the lives of this year's new generation. Welcome to Frog Watch 2019. Almost exactly one year ago today, the UK was in a bitter cold weather period, nicknamed the Beast from the East. If you were to go back and watch episode one of last year's series, you'll see me wear a hat, gloves and a scarf and walk into the pond in the snow. This year, the weather is much milder and there's no real risk of the frog spawn freezing and dying like it did last year. But let's go down to the pond and we'll see if we can find any frog spawn. This series will be following along with the development of a new generation of frogs, from spawn to froglet. I shall be gathering a small amount of frog spawn to take home and place in an aquarium so we can watch them grow and develop before releasing them back into the wild where they belong. The UK has two native species of frog, the European common frog and the much rarer pool frog. We also have two species of frog introduced to Britain sometime around the 1930s that have established populations here. These are the marsh frog and the edible frog. Of course, there are also other species of frog that can be found, such as the African clawed frog and the American bullfrog, but these are much rarer and are most likely former pet frogs that have either escaped or have been deliberately released by irresponsible owners. For this series, I will be talking mainly about the European common frog, and any information I give out about the care of tadpoles and frogs will relate only to this species. If you have pet frogs of a different species, make sure you do your own research, as any information I give out may not apply to all frog species. What you're looking at here are thousands and thousands of eggs, known as spawn, that has been laid by the European common frog. A single female frog can lay around 2,000 or more eggs. For the frog, it's quantity over quality as far as offspring are concerned. From the thousands of eggs laid, only around five will reach adulthood. No one ever said being a tadpole was easy. The common frog can be found over most of Europe. As its name suggests, it is rather common, although as with many amphibians, disease and habitat loss have taken the toll and is not as common as it once was. So I can spot some freshly laid frog spawn in the pond and I'm going to try and grab that. I've got with me a jar and let's see if I can get some. Breeding will take place around late March, but depending on temperature, can be earlier or later in the season. What you can see here are eggs at different stages of development. Some, like the clump I've taken, are fairly fresh, perhaps laid in the last day or two. Some clumps are older and covered in algae, and you may see some small amount of development. We can also see some recently hatched tadpoles. These are clumped together, still attached to the jelly of the eggs, where they will remain for a few days. And here are some free swimming tadpoles that probably hatched a few days ago. Okay then, meet the stars of this year's Frog Watch. I'm really excited to get these home and we're going to set up the tank for them, put them in, watch them grow over the next few weeks and months and it should be a pretty good series. I'm really excited for this. I hope you are too. Let's go home, set up the tank and get them settled in. I'll see you back home. Alright then, so we're back home. We have our frog spawn in the jar but we've got a little way to go before we can start setting up our tank here. 
There's a few bits of cleaning that needs to be done. This tank needs to be cleaned out. It's not been cleaned out since last year, so I've got some work to do just to rinse it out, get rid of all the, the detritus that's in there. I've got some brand new aquarium gravel. This is going to need uh, rinsing and washing. It's full of dust at the moment. That all needs to be flushed out. Um, and I've got myself three uh, new plants. I'll write down what plants these are in the um, description of the video so you can see exactly what I've got. I've not tried these ones before, but we'll see how they go. Um, so yeah, the best thing to do is just to get straight onto it. I'm going I'm to rinse this out, I'm going to rinse the gravel, and then we'll get set up with the tank. <laughs> Okay, so I've rinsed these stones pretty thoroughly, but the dust on them that really does cling to it, and it does take a lot of time to, to rinse it through to get that dust off. Last thing I'm going to do now is to put some freshly boiled water and rinse it through. Hopefully this will really get rid of all the kind of dust and make sure that these stones are just right for the, the aquarium. Okay, I'm going to let that drain out for a little bit and then we're going to put it into our tank. Okay, now that the stones have been rinsed, boiled, and they've been placed into the aquarium, it's now ready for us to put the water in. Now, water is quite an important aspect of the aquarium. The best thing to use is rainwater because that has no chemicals in, no nutrients, and is perfectly safe for the tadpoles. Um, there are other alternatives if you don't have any rainwater lying around. Uh, you can use distilled water, bottled water, make sure that there's no chemicals, no chlorine, or anything like that in it. Um, you can use tap water, but there are a few things that you need to do with the tap water to make it safe. One is you can leave it for at least 24 hours, just sitting in the tank before you add any of the tadpoles or the spawn. Um, over the 24 hours, the chlorine in the water will um, leach out of the water and, di and dissipate, and it will then be rendered safe to use. The other option that we can use is using something like tap safe, a kind of thing that you can get from pet shops, uh, which uh, you add into the water, a little dropper, and it uh, just um, neutralizes the chlorine and makes it safe for the tadpoles or fish if that's what you have. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing today because I'm pretty disorganized. I haven't got this ahead of time and I need to, I need to put the spawn in the tank. I'm just going to put tap water in. I'm going to use tap safe and then we're going to add the spawn in straight after that. It's not the best thing to do, but unfortunately I'm pretty disorganized and I haven't got this uh, ready ahead of time. So that's the, that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, so I've placed about 10 litres of water in this tank. It's uh, supposed to be a 12 litre capacity and I haven't filled it all the way up to the top, but there's plenty for what we're going to need. Now I'm going to be using this tap safe. Now the directions on here say that uh, one capful will treat uh, about two litres. So that's five capfuls of this stuff into the tank, thoroughly mix it, and it will then be safe to add in the spawn. First thing we'll do is add the plants, but then we'll add the spawn. So I'm going to put this in and uh, we're getting closer to the uh, to the end. All right, so that's done. Tap safe is in. That water should now be perfectly safe for any wildlife that we're going to be putting in. First thing we'll do now is put in these three plants that we have. So on these plants, they can't specify back and middle, I assume because these are slightly taller plants and better suited for the back of the aquarium. And this one's a shorter plant, better suited for the middle. It's only a small tank, so we don't need too many plants in there. So I'm going to get these in and set up and uh, we'll show you a little bit close up and we'll see how it looks. All right, so those three plants are now in. I uh, had a little bit of trouble getting them to settle down. Probably could have done with some aquarium plant weights to make sure they're weighted down because they wanted just to float back up again. A little bit awkward, but we think, I think I've got them in there now. Um, so it looks pretty good. So it's time to sort of add in the spawn. I'm going to leave it just a little while because the water is still a little bit colder and the frog spawn's been sitting there for a little while um, and it's been gone up to room temperature. So I'm going to give this a chance to get to room temperature before we add them in so there's not too much of a shock between the, uh, the levels of the temperatures of the water as I add in the frog spawn. But uh, we are pretty much there. 
Okay, so I've left it a little bit longer than I planned. It's actually now the next day, so it has been sitting here overnight. Um, so everything should be settled down. Temperatures will have equalized. It's going to be a perfect opportunity now to place the spawn into the tank, and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Now this will contain some of the pond water and probably some little microorganisms that were in there as well. There we go, it's going to squash the plant a little bit. As you can see there are hundreds of eggs here, far too many for the size of tank I have. The general rule is around two or three tadpoles for every litre of water you have. Obviously when they're small you can have more but as they grow they need more space. Once the tadpoles have hatched and grown a little bit, I shall release many of them back into the pond and just keep a few suitable for my tank. An important thing to remember about looking after tadpoles is to always release them back to the pond you got them from. You shouldn't release them into different areas as that may transfer diseases from one area to another. Well that's just about it for this week, thank you so much for watching, I hope you're going to come back next time. Every week in this series going forward for the next few weeks and months I'll be showing you the development of the tadpoles and growing up into little frogs before releasing them. But it's not just going to be about the tadpoles and the little frogs, I also want to show you some other types of wildlife that you might find in your garden or in and around your local ponds. I've got big plans for this series and I really hope you'll come back so that I can share some of the things that I find with you. I can't wait to get started on this year's series, so I'll see you next time. Goodbye.